Hello, this is Notes from the Back Row, a podcast like no other, different themes, rotating hosts, and so much more. So strap in for a veritable cinematic Coney Island of the mind. Welcome to another episode of the Notes from the Back Row podcast, the official podcast for backdashroad.com, where you will find lots of different types of episodes. Sometimes it's an episode of Hoser Horror, where Carlo and I talk about Canadian horror movies. Sometimes it's an interview. Sometimes it's a roundtable discussion. And sometimes it's something else entirely. So go to backdashrow.com and check out all of the essays and written content there. You can subscribe to us on Patreon and get podcast episodes early and also bonus episodes. And yeah, follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at backrowcineblog. And I'm Dan, and I'm here as always with... Carlo. Carlo. And you may be thinking, oh, I'm going to listen to some some hosers talk about canadian horror (laughs) great (laughs) but if you were a patreon member you would know that something that we did recently was talk about all of the prom night movies and we called it our franchise frenzy episode and you're listening to a new one yeah Yeah, for everyone to listen to so not an exclusive yeah like like a timed exclusive as all our episodes are so so we're gonna talk about a movie series maybe one that goes a little under the radar we're going to talk about every movie in that series from start to finish i've <laughs> never heard of these movies to be honest so <laughs> i don't and, many people will <laughs> and i don't really know why i forced you to watch them all but i, I know did. why <laughs> i know why you really like that director he did monolith yeah you really like that movie so i can see why I watched Monolith, directed by John Ayers, and I said, this was a fun movie. And then I went to Letterboxd and looked at his page, and I said, wow, he made three Project Shadow Chaser movies. And then there's a fourth one directed by someone else. I should watch all of them. (laughs) And then you did, and then you dragged me into it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which is cool. (laughs) Yeah, totally. It makes for something to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. We, we've been thinking about changing it up. Like, I love, I love doing Hoser Horror. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, and I love discovering all these obscure Canadian horror movies, but sometimes you just want to, I don't know, ch- change it up a little bit. And <laughs> yeah. so we're doing, like, franchises, I guess. So spe- <laughs> speaking of John Ayers, um, are you going to watch his Eddie Griffin movie? Oh, Irish Jam? Irish Jam, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay, because that looks pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I will tell you that the percentage chance that I watch Judge and Jury, his Shocker-esque movie about a guy oh, yeah. who comes back from the dead as because of electricity or something along those lines <laughs> to, to get revenge. Yeah. Um, Ripper, his Canadian-British co-production, and then Octopus from 2000. The percentage chance I watched those three movies, pretty high. <laughs> yeah, I, f- I feel like you're definitely at least going to watch one of them. And maybe if it's a dud, you take a pause. I, didn't, I know how these things go. But exactly. yeah, that, that Shocker one... Uh, yeah, I might give that a shot as well myself. Because I like, mean, yeah, if if you're listening, go to Letterbox and type "judge and jury" in. Mm-hmm. It's from 1997. Look at that cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks very garish. Very, uh, I don't know. It's like I almost wanted to say Keith David, but it's David Keith. Yes, yeah, yeah. And isn't Frank Segarino in that as well? Or um, I, I don't remember. I don't think so. No, it's like David Keith and someone else who's Martin Cove. <laughs> oh, yeah, Martin Cove, exactly, yeah, which is a perfect segue into, well, I mean, we're talking about John Ayer's movie, so there's no need for a segue, so might as well just get it to it. <laughs> well, 
here's a question for you. So Frank Zagarino, this is, you know, this franchise is his franchise. Basically, yeah. He is in every single one, and he is the bad guy in all of them. How familiar or not familiar were you with the Zags before this? I feel like I've definitely seen a movie he was in, but I can't remember what movie I've seen. But I don't know. It, it felt like coming in fresh, like this guy. I, I sort of, you know, when you dabble into B DTV action movies, this, it's just a name that pops up here and there. But I don't know. This is like the first time I've become aware of Frank Zagarino. I don't know. This guy, <laughs> does he always look like this in 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 like okay in the project shadow chaser movies he basically looks like in who framed roger rabbit christopher lloyd plays a character called judge doom he basically looks like judge doom's son <laughs> he's got this like albino bug-eyed yeah but then jacked up kind of thing going on i i don't think he has white hair in every movie because i went and searched his name and i'm scrolling through images and there's definitely pictures of him from other movies where he's like holding guns and he and he doesn't have white hair but mm, yeah mm, it's a look for yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i was similar i didn't really know too much about him when i looked up his filmography i saw some movies i had seen like waxwork 2 and stuff oh uh, yeah i've seen waxwork 2 sure this yeah. is definitely like introduction to him as an actor for sure i've now probably seen like at least 30 percent of his filmography with these four <laughs> movies i feel <laughs> yeah let's get right into shadow chaser aka project shadow chaser 1992 somewhere in america sometime in the future six terrorists have hijacked a hospital and one very special hostage jesus christ Say hello to your father, sir. This psycho is an android. The perfect synthetic warrior. Project Shadow Chaser. Right out of the gate, straight to video. Um, directed by John Ayers. And the synopsis is, terrorists with an indestructible robot take over a high-rise hospital in order to kidnap the president's daughter. It was filmed in London, England, as well as Vancouver, Canada, they apparently shot uh, on some of the sets that were from Alien 3, which was also 1992, I believe. So this movie is one of it is a knockoff movie. Oh, yeah. And pick an action movie from this era. It's a knockoff of that movie. Probably it's it's a Die Hard. Yep. It's a Terminator. Yep. It's also kind of an Escape from New York ripoff because yeah. the, there's a the bit guy. of uh, Demolition Man in there. Yeah, I think that absolutely. was later, but yeah, yeah. Demolition yeah. Man is '93, I'm sure. It, it also kind of reminded me of John Woo's Hard Boiled because it's set at a hospital. So yeah, kind of an eclectic ripoff of everything, but it's all like in the same category of movies. Um, so that that's pretty surefire to be at least a little enjoyable. Also, speaking of Demolition Man. I never realized that Demolition Man exploitation was a thing because you've got this and we recently with the crud buddies watched Hologram Man, which oh, is yeah. very Demolition Man-y, but well, that one at least came out after Demolition Man. Yeah, apparently that's a thing. And now I'm wondering, is, is there more like guys being taught out to do so you know? yeah i was gonna say is that is that all you need is it does it just have to have a a prominent like we're thawing you out yeah, to get yeah, somebody it feels, yeah exactly that kind of thing and in in hologram it's a bit different because a guy doesn't get like frozen but he gets turned into a hologram but it feels similar i feel like virtuosity might be sort of similar as well but you're like moving further and further away from like the whole like it's just a a, 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 an AI in virtuosity so it's a bit different but it's it has to be f I feel like either an ex cop or someone who's gonna do cop like like stuff or the same thing but with a criminal who has to be I don't know like thought out or like released to solve a problem or cause problems that kind of thing that's very demolition manny yeah and in project shadow chaser the gist of the plot outside of that synopsis is you know there's these terrorists they're taking over a hospital the president's daughter is inside and there's a hostage situation so the cops say we're gonna go thaw out the architect who designed the building and he's gonna help us figure out how can we get in and save her 
but they accidentally unthaw a football player, <laughs> and he's yeah. just happy to not be frozen. So he's like, I'm totally the guy that you're looking for. Yeah, I, I really... Like, that was one of my favorite parts of this movie, just, like, Martin Cove's character. He's, he's, he's pretty fun in this movie. Just the fact that it's, it's a football player. Yeah. And, and you don't find that out, like, immediately. Like, they... This is a recurring... This, go, this is going to be a recurring thing with these movies. Um, but they don't really explain a lot. Like, <laughs> even just the fact, like... Do you know what Project Shadow Chaser is? Because I've seen four of these movies and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I... It's Project Shadow Chaser because it seems to change from movie to movie even. Yeah, I know that in this movie it's basically the project in which Frank Zagarino's android was created to be an unstoppable killing machine. Is that it? Yeah. It's just like making robots, basically. That's Project Shadow Chaser. Yeah, so they had a project to make that, and he's one, and okay. he got out okay. or whatever. Okay, so put a pin on that, and we'll, yeah. get, we'll come back to it <laughs> for the sequels. Um, but yeah, no, I kind of enjoyed in this movie that they don't really hold your hand and try to explain stuff you probably already have seen in other movies. You don't really need that in a B movie. Um, they just drop you into this world and... You figure it out, more or less, which which was interesting because it's like, okay, they thaw this guy out, Martin Cove. Speaking of Martin Cove, have you ever seen Steel Justice? Oh, I know the cover. I don't know if I've... I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, um, I watched it. I had pretty high expectations because I saw some really good reviews on Letterboxd of it. But yeah, I don't know. Let's just say there's a few laughs, but it's not as good as Ice Cube movies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nice. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, Martin Cove, he gets thawed out, but he wakes up with this fake-ass Captain Ahab beard, and the mm -hmm. first thing out of his mouth is that he wants a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Just a real schlubby dude, and like, I don't know, I don't know how they fucked this up. Like, they <laughs> meant to thaw an architect, but they've got this football player guy. I yeah. Mean, just the concept of a football player having to save the day and and he really leans into the football thing as well at several <laughs> points in the movie which was fun as well i mean it's, it's it's not like they thought out the wrong army guy who's still qualified it's just some jock and also why why is a football player even cryogenically frozen i feel like they mention it but i don't remember <laughs> there, there is a part Kind of, it's not an explanation, but uh, there's a part of Martin Cove. He, he flirts with this nurse characters in the hospital, mm. and and Mac Foster's character uh, says something like, "I can see why they had to freeze you." I guess this guy was just like screwing around and sleazy guy. His, his libido <laughs> was too big, so I don't know. They froze him. I don't know. <laughs> it makes no sense. I I did like that the guy who was in charge of the unfreezing was a real sort of like wacky character and he was like Fonzie bumping it to get it open and stuff. I, I feel like that guy was believably the kind of character that would fuck up the unfreezing process. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really liked the guy who was like in charge of the operation. Like this really tough talking kind of like Clint Eastwood accent going on with this guy. Like it, it feels like they got the roles all kind of mixed up. Like this more like um, oh, what's what's like Richard Krenna's character's name in First Blood. But yeah, you know who I mean. Um, that that type of character who's like more together and everything and he's like leading the operation and everything. But he's he feels more like a wild card and he's constantly talking in this whispery, like I said, sort of like dirty, hairy kind of voice. But it's, I don't know, you expect that more out of Martin Coe's character because he's the leading man and he's supposed to save every, everyone and solve all this shit. But that was kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I thought this movie was pretty charming. It's, it's, it's overstuffed, um, but it has that... Um, early kind of like early in a career sort of energy of I'm just going to dump everything into this blender of a movie and see what comes out. There, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's very throw everything at the wall. And even if not everything sticks, there's still enough there that does kind of work. Well, moments where, where it's a little bit slumpy, I feel, but still there's, there's, there's definitely just enough weird stuff in this movie that made me like it. Like, 
and a lot of it has to do with like Martin Coe's character and like the whole football player stupid stuff. There's this part in the movie where I think it might be again like one of the nurses in the hospital who's about to be assaulted and he sort of intervenes and he hits this guy and he go. I think he says something like two points when he hits him. And I'm like, what are two points in American football even? Is that a thing? Is, what, is, what is that even called? Toosies? I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know a whole lot about American football. I, I mean, I played Madden, Madden 64 when that came out for like an entire day. Isn't there like a two-point conversion? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, that, yeah. Look something. At, look at this here, like all oh, sports casting it up. So yeah, let's stop that. <laughs> but yeah, I just loved how he was leaning into all that stuff. And, and at the end as well, when he's basically saved the day, he like kisses the ground and he goes like touchdown and he pours, yeah. <laughs> pours a beer over his own head like he just won the game. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was good. That was really good. Yeah. yeah, I definitely felt the slump in this movie, but I enjoyed that they kind of pull things back at the end for a pretty fun like, you know, like this is a lower budget movie, but they they try their best to do some effect shots. And there's like a. I think there's a scene in an elevator where he's hanging above like an explosion. And so there's some fun stuff. And, and like you mentioned, you know, the main guy has some good lines. The, the Zags is the sort of Terminator-esque bad guy. And, and he's like, you got piss eyes or something because his <laughs> eyes are yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the movie starts really good as well. Like it's basically Zagarino, Frank Zagarino's character, who's... I don't know, like an unnamed android, basically. Uh, this albino Terminator in these movies. And he, he's, he buries, like, a guy's face in a monitor as the opening credits are, like, popping up uh, every once in a while. Um, with some pretty good music as well, I remember, uh, for this kind of movie. So I was, like, pretty into it, like, right off the bat. And, again, the fact that this guy is supposed to be an android, I think he only learned that, like, halfway through the movie as well. Like, none of it is explained at the start. And, and there, There's an ongoing theme with these movies that we'll surely mention again, but they are very um, off and on with their sound effects. So sometimes there'll be shots where he'll turn his head and you'll go like... Vroom, vroom, yeah, the, the Robocop head <laughs> tilt thing. Yeah, But then other scenes, he's just doing whatever and there's no sounds, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'll definitely get back to that for the fourth movie especially because uh, it's like they forget that he's a android yeah they just forget yeah what exactly he is and it's because it's <laughs> never really very very explained like in this one okay he's an android that's i feel like they were better off just never saying that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> um just leave it entirely unexplained well we'll, we'll get into why some of that leads me to like some of these movies mm -hmm. <laughs> but i do i do like that you know it's a series of movies around his character and they never decide to make his character the actual like focus of any of the movies it's just kind of a means to an end to make a diehard movie yeah he's just there in to, this regard to cause like he's like this almost like a deus ex machina but just there to cause conflict they're like oh how do you get conflict in this movie i don't know this guy shows up and fucks everything up for whatever reason he's the leader of an android army i guess yeah i guess <laughs> basically yeah and just walking around with his titties out honestly dude i don't need to see your titties the entire time for four entire movies like we'll what? get there's a lot of that in number two yeah once or twice is enough i mean i have a pause button if i need it, so you know <laughs> Don't show off. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, uh, I looked up what Frank Zagarino is doing right now. Do you know? Um, listening to this podcast? <laughs> oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> Frank, get back to this. Yeah. No, he, he owns and operates a portable outdoor movie screen party rental company in New York. Sweet. So, yeah. Maybe they come with some of his movies oh, that would be <laughs> as a pack-in. Yeah. yeah, we should uh, go and visit Jenna and, and 
set, yeah. set something up like uh, <laughs> rent a uh, uh, put together like an outdoor movie screen party and get, get, get Zax to make a special appearance yo shadow chaser <laughs> <laughs> okay so project shadow chaser 1992 are you gonna give it a android thumbs up in a fire or are you gonna give it two piss eyes down <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna give this a thumbs up okay. um especially compared to what we'll be getting into next <laughs> um, yeah yeah <laughs> well i gotta say thumbs up android hand thumbs up and a fire for me which brings us to project shadow chaser 2 from 1994 <laughs> Just get some people down here. The ultimate terrorist. The Cobra system is a top secret military experiment. The world's worst nightmare. They're authorizing an air Her greatest threat. He's armed. And dangerous. Synopsis, terrorists led by an android take over a nuclear plant and threaten to launch a missile at Washington. While the authorities desperately attempt to negotiate, the terrorists pursue their real goal. A plant worker, her son, and a tough guy repairman have other ideas and attempt to stop the terrorists from inside the plant. Also directed by John Ayers, also starring Frank Zagarino, this one was filmed in South Africa. This was my first taste of what this series is actually going to be, which is it's not a franchise where we will follow a villain from movie to movie with any kind of consistency. What it's actually going to be is whatever kind of movie John Ayers feels like making that day, he's going to make it and he'll put Project Shadow Chaser on the cover and he'll have the Zags in there as the villain, Android maybe or not in later movies. And it's just his excuse to make whatever genre movie he wants. So the first one was Die Hard Action, kind of a Terminator movie. Yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. And this one is like straight up DTV cheapo action movie, but it has a bigger budget than the first movie. And yeah, I I was so shocked that you gave this a negative review because when I watched this, I had such a good time. It felt like a crud buddies like... If this had been one of our screenings on a Sunday morning, it would have like played gangbusters. It's like it's fast. There's lots of action. There's lots of fighting. It just feels like that kind of 90s DTV thing that we kind of go for. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. We definitely go for that kind of thing. But I don't know. This movie just like I was fine with it at the start, but then it never... I don't know, like I started missing the quirks of the first movie. Like the first movie is basically such a big mess because it's trying to do so much. But that's because that's why I liked it. That's okay. And I don't know, I go into a sequel, even if it's just like in name a sequel. But also I'm kind of pissed at that because you're calling it Project (laughs) Shadow Chaser. You're bringing back the same damn character as an android, at least in this one as well. I'm like, how how are these connected? Like, I, I want to know <laughs> more, but they, they just hold back on that kind of thing. No. And in this movie, they name him. In the first movie, he plays uh, an android named Romulus. And in this movie, he just plays android. Oh, quote unquote. okay. Okay. So it's almost like they give up on that entirely. <laughs> They're just like, he's an android yeah. now. And maybe he's not even the same one. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Also, like, going into... Okay, let's call it just like a second movie in the series, even if it's not connected. But by default, I feel like a sequel should be zanier than the first one in the series. But this is kind of... This movie's pretty zany. I felt like it was kind of the opposite. Like, I felt the first one was really, really wacky in in parts. But this was pretty straightforward, diehard kind of thing. I guess I can understand that. Like, structurally as well. Like, it's... I don't know. With the first one, I had the feeling that I never knew what to expect because there was so many, like, I don't know, weird, quirky things and decisions Mm -hmm. made that don't add up. But this one was, I don't know. With this one, I had more the feeling like 
I've seen this movie a thousand times before, kind of. And I don't know. I get that. I guess I was expecting just something weird again based on the first one. And yeah. I was happy that, you know, like you said, the, the first movie is trying to do a lot of things mm -hmm. charmingly. And for me, this movie did one thing really well. And it almost felt like the kind of like ideal direct video action movie. Like, you know, we've watched stuff like Stick Fighter. And yeah. but that's a little bit weirder. And maybe yeah. it's more along the lines of something like Back in Action, the Billy Blanks movie. Like that yeah, kind yeah, of just yeah. like you're coming here for just people fighting people having gunfights people that one has billy blanks and roddy piper though i know i know I mean... but but that it's like that level of like the only thing you're here for is to watch people beat the crap out of each other and you know jump away from explosions and stuff and i felt like for me the movie delivered and you know there's a scene in this where one of the dudes that that the main guy he's like fighting this dude and the dude gets lit on fire and oh yeah that was pretty sick does a full a, a full body burn and then they keep fighting and yeah. i was like yes yes this movie rules <laughs> yeah that, that was sick that was sick agreed totally and it just felt bigger and better but you're right it loses some of the charm but i did feel like they give zagarino more to do he, he gets like one-liners and he like does there's a scene that you sent a screenshot yeah, to me the, of where he's yeah, walking yeah, down yeah. the hallway with like machine guns and i liked that yeah the, you mean part of the with the christmas hat that he yeah. puts on yeah 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 that was pretty good Just this, oh yeah it's a christmas movie yeah yeah exactly like i was uh putting in my notes like one thing they forgot to do in the first one by basically doing a diehard ripoff was to make it a christmas movie they forgot to do that in the first one so now they're making up for it so like here's your christmas uh set shadow chaser <laughs> even though you don't notice it very much it's it's just like at a building where there's a Christmas party. I don't know. I guess that's plenty. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I felt like Zagarino, he he picked up the slack for the movie being not as charming. I felt like they they lean into him being kind of weird in this movie. Yeah, and, and, and this one, like, he's an android, but what was up with the scientist guy? Was he controlling Zagarino, or was it the other way around, where they're working together? I couldn't tell. Like, there was <laughs> one know. point where I almost thought that the scientist guy was controlling Frank Zagarino's character, and even, like, as they were talking to each other, this guy was, like, typing on his computer. I'm like, is he typing the words Zagarino is saying? Uh... But that was... That was just me my, trying to make the movie a bit more interesting in my mind, I think, <laughs> because there was no follow up to that at all. And I'm like, oh, that, that, what would, that would have been weird. So and then I started thinking, oh, what if he makes a typo? <laughs> Zagarin like saying shit like yur yurky, <laughs> yurky and stuff. <laughs> that would be great. Should make a movie like that. A, a, a robot who's controlled by a computer and you have to type his dialogue. And it's kind of like a... Cyrano de Bergerac kind of thing, like uh, Steve Martin's Roxanne. <laughs> but it's that thing, but it's what, like shitload of typos and, and like LOL and stuff. That would be a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this movie, Die Hard, they're going to they're gonna nuke Washington. They got to stop him. And the main guy ends up taking this kid around and, there's, and his mom is there as well. So there's some of that kind of like, we got to save the kid vibe going on. I did laugh at the setup and punchline of at the beginning of the movie the main character looks at the the main female oh, lead yeah, and he's like nice ass or something yeah, and she's yeah. like would you say and then at the end of the movie she looks at him and says nice ass and it freeze frames on him being like uh -huh. as he gets a boner <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Did he not have a beer at the end of this one, too? Or am I um, forgetting? He's drinking a lot at the start. Because like, he's an alcoholic. Yeah, I'm not sure if I really care for this guy, like Brian Genesee or, or Genesee or whatever. Yeah, he's not much of anything, really. No, not really. And he's he's your main guy. So I was like, oh, bring. I wish they brought back Martin Cove or like someone at least, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I got like bad vibes off this guy like right away with the cat calling and just the nonstop drinking. It wasn't his name like Meat or something. I'm, I'm like, is this a nickname? Is, is this like Por hey, is, isn't yeah, there, Frank Mead? Yeah, isn't there a guy in Porky's called Meat? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't really get behind him. So if you're going into this movie, definitely make it for Frank Zagarino, I guess. And mm -hmm. so I guess there's like. I don't know. I keep wanting to find connectivity in these movies. Like no, thinking, like there's none. Like there's several. <laughs> 
Zagarino androids, and this is just one of them, I guess, because the one in the first one, spoiler alert, blew up at the end. Yeah, you could you could take it that way because they never try and show you him coming back or how he exists still. Actually, actually, there is connectivity in these movies, and but but I will I will get to that when we talk about the third one. Okay, so let's let's say then project shadow chaser 2 are you giving it thumbs up android hand in a fire or two piss eyes down uh, it's gotta be at least one piss eye down for me okay you're somewhere in the middle yeah yeah it's it's okay. it's fine that's that's yeah. where i'm landing on the <laughs> second one all right for me android thumbs up i was i was pleased with the first movie and then this one i was like oh man i love this <laughs> and i hope i continue to love these movies and I was a little disappointed. We'll we'll get to that. But for me, if you're going to watch one of these movies, I think you should check this movie out for sure. So, Project Shadow Chaser 3, 1995. In this galaxy. In this ship. It's heading right for us. Lies a dormant force. There's a ship on the collision course with us. So terrifying. Impact, 70 seconds. It ain't human! It ain't human! No! That once awakened cannot be controlled. Sam Bottoms. Masetta Vander. Christopher Atkins. How the hell did you get in here? Frank Zagarino. And Christopher Neen. Project Shadow Chaser 3. Also, direct a video. It's been 25 years since the spaceship Siberia was last heard from. Unfortunately, it's on a collision course with the communication station ComStat 5, which is orbiting Mars. Listeners may be confused. We'll get to it. <laughs> you will remain confused. Uh, yeah. No worries. After one successful maneuver to avoid the Siberia, it rams ComStat 5, and the crew finds that the, Sib the Siberia crew is dead, and the reason for that has been missing for 25 years. This is a really well-written synopsis. <laughs> Thanks, IMDb. <laughs> you know, you could have rewritten that stuff. You've seen the nope. movie, so... <laughs> Link <Yeah>. ass. <laughs> yeah. So, also directed by John Ayers, um, also starring the Zags and mm -hmm. many other people. Yeah. This movie is basically a spaceship finds another spaceship that's been missing for a long time, and they end up having to get on it because they crash into it, and, uh-oh... Zags is there and he's taken everybody out. Sounds like a horror movie. Well, it is. This is a space horror movie. It has nothing to do with the other movies. And Frank Zagarino isn't even really an android. He's like a shapeshifter now who can be other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the fuck? And it takes a long ass time before he even shows up in this yeah, one. Over an hour before he shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point where, like, was this even intended to be a project? shadow chaser movie but then he shows up and you're like oh i guess that's enough that makes it a so are all frank zagarino movies project shadow chaser movies <laughs> yeah you could say so okay cool cool well, then... only movies where he plays the villain <laughs> no i'm gonna say all <laughs> like his entire filmography is just product shadow chaser movies just some of them are just not called that and sometimes he's not an android but that's fine it's all the same movie. Yeah. So what you you could say the second and the first movie are like, like you mentioned before, maybe in the second movie, it's another version of this android. But in this movie, it's like, we're in the future. We're in space. He's a shapeshifter. He's a, he, it's almost a slasher monster movie in space. It's like completely, completely different. Yeah. Also, this one's called Project Shadow Chaser 3000. Yes. On some, Yeah. But it's also known as Beyond the Edge of Darkness oh, as well okay. sometimes. Because I was going to say, like, what, what happened to the other 2,997 <laughs> movies? Like, we missed a bunch, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. So for Sh Product Shadow Chaser 3, you know, I really was worried that, uh, you know, a movie where he doesn't show up until an hour in would be awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and, and, you know, now he's like a predator, the thing kind of horror villain on the set of Aliens instead of an action movie. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit OK with this movie. I, I felt like, you know, we the two of us have seen a lot of space horror movies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And oftentimes they're just 
people sitting around doing nothing. Mm, true. Yeah. And I felt like I mentioned in my review, you know, the, one of the things that I like about John Ayers and his movies is even when he makes these movies that are knockoffs, they never feel like cash grabs, like in a sense, like they feel like he you know, has love for this kind of movie and there's a lot of miniatures and fun, like, like you can kind of feel the kind of effort and love put into them, even if it's not the coolest, best movie ever. Um, I just kind of like his, there's something about his sort of like attitude and vibe that comes across that I kind of like it, you know, at this point in the series, every movie has to have all this blue lightning and stuff. And I'm down for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just like space horror. I have a big soft spot for even, even if it's not horror, like movies, these kind of movies that are like sort of alien ripoffs, they're all like. Um, it's all just sets made to look like uh, inside of a spaceship. Um, that's just an aesthetic I can just gawk at and nothing really needs to be happening as long as it's lit pretty okay, like the cinematography is on point. Um, I even watched uh, one movie, um, Dracula 3000. Do you remember that movie? <laughs> Did you ever watch that? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay, I guess I'm the only one then. <laughs> like, I even watched that piece of shit. I'm like, yeah, sure, this is fine. I can, I, I can look at this for like, I don't know, what was it, like 80 minutes tops? And yeah, same thing with this. Um, I wasn't blown away by this or anything. Like, uh, I gave it like two stars as well. Same as the last one. Yeah. It it was fine. There was like really good gore, actually, like face peeling off. And this one really, really bizarre scene of like two people m melting into each other. Yeah, and that then was sweet. They turn into Frank Zagarino. Yeah. Or something. I don't <laughs> That's know. like his reveal or something, isn't it? And then he's like, it's me. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But yeah, I definitely perked up at that. Like, um, good job on those effects for sure. There is also this one scene of this guy who gets like in a pressure cabin sort of thing and he's, he sort of explodes. But they use this really weird effect where it's almost like you go into Photoshop and use a smudge effect on something and his face just gets like, I don't know, like smudgy and the next shot is just like you know blood on a on the window of that cell thing that was pretty gnarly as well like it's it's implied and it just looked goofy but yeah that was cool stuff like that in this movie and i like the cast as well of this movie um more than you know the second one it's only frank zagarino and the rest like i said the brian genesee character I couldn't get into him, but this one, uh, you've got like the main uh, leading uh, actress, Musetta Vander, who um, she also played, I'm pretty sure, a Russian woman in Monolith, like at the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Um, so I guess she has kind of a history with John Ayers. Um, but I was going to say, us galaxy brains I might know her better from her portrayal. <laughs> Uh, as Sindel in Mortal Kombat Anni Annihilation, <laughs> which is a, I don't know, I kind of like that movie. <laughs> I got to revisit it. I saw it in theaters and loved it at the time, oh, but did have you? not seen it since. I remember renting it when it came out because I'm pretty sure it didn't play te te theaters over <laughs> here because I was a huge um, Mortal Kombat the movie fan when it came out. I I'm, I'm still am, basically. And I was just super disappointed when that, I don't know, when I rented it. I, I don't think I even finished it. I like watched like <laughs> half an hour and turned it off. But in the past couple of years, I think I've seen it like three times. I, I kind of keep going back to it. It's It just has this, I don't know, garish quality to it. They throw like every character that's in the video game. They try to force it in and it's all kind of off, but... But yeah, anyway, she's in that movie as well, and that's why I remember. Uh, she's also in two Full Moon movies called uh, Oblivion. Have you seen those? Oh, no, but I've seen the cover. It has the, like, uh, Sheriff Star. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, those movies are pretty fun, actually. I'd say they, those are worth checking out. They're also they're pretty short, a little bit slumpy here and there, but they're cool. Definitely worth a watch. Um, I think she's the leading character, lead character in the second one. And the first one, she plays more like a villain type character. But in the second one, she becomes like, um, yeah, the main actress in that. But yeah, she's in this and I liked her in this. I uh, 
And and who, who uh, another actor in this is Christopher Atkins, Blue Lagoon guy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't recognize him at first because he kind of looks like David Spade with a chin strap beard, and and he's called <laughs> Snake. So I guess he's supposed to be a badass. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of lame, but I don't know in, in a goofy kind of way. Where I was like, look at this David Spade and Space guy, <laughs> Snake. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it has that like they're they're really reaching for the aliens like mismatched crew gets picked off one yeah, by one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's even a dog. Oh, that dog was pretty adorable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So it's not an, a cat, which is often the case in like it, it's it's a case in Alien and a bunch of alien ripoffs as well. They try to recreate the whole cat thing. <laughs> Project Shadow Chaser at this point in the series I was a little let down coming off of the high of number three, but I still enjoyed this. I, like at this point, I'm taking each one of these movies as they come. And f as far as a 90 minute, you know, space horror movie, I, I was pleased. And so for me, this gets a Android in fire thumbs up hand. <laughs> oh, that's 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 kind of generous even. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, sure. Let, let's let's both give this one a thumbs up. I, I enjoyed this more than the second one, even though I wasn't always paying attention. But sure. It should be said, I watched Project Shadow Chaser 1, 2, and 3 in a marathon back to back. Oh, Jesus, really? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Hardcore. And I was going to watch the fourth one, but Emma was like, it's late. No. Oh, my God. Poor Emma. <laughs> Stop putting this crap on the TV. <laughs> Yeah, let me watch. Uh, what was it? What was she watching? <laughs> Gossip Girl. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh. So then I woke up the next day and I immediately put on Project Shadow Chaser Four from 1996. The great alien invasion of Africa. They shook the earth, then vanished, leaving behind an interstellar key and its protector until two archaeologists discovered this window to the past. This belongs five, 10,000 years ago. And the key to the future. Professor, I think we found something. I want you to scan the hieroglyph. Email it up to me immediately. But not everyone wants this door open. What's your turn? What is my people? An alien. It's a humanoid from another planet. I have heard the signal. souls fighting an alien terminal. What am I looking for? Immortality. Oh my god. Michael, run! They must escape the predator. It's him! And reconnect the past to the present. Your world will cease to exist. <laughs> alien Chaser from Apex Entertainment. Rated R. Directed by Mark Roper. Synopsis, after two archaeologists discover an ancient alien artifact in Africa, they must run for their lives from both the unstoppable guardian and protector that awakens as a result, and their greedy madman employer, both of whom want the artifact. This film is also a.k.a. The Gates of Time, also a.k.a. Orion's Key, also a.k.a. probably was not supposed to be a Shadow Chaser movie, maybe, I don't know. Um, this is the first one that was not directed by John Ayers. I believe he produced it, though. This was also filmed in South Africa. Fun piece of IMDb trivia that I saw. <laughs> Somebody went in there and added... As of January 2020, this remains the final entry in the Shadow Chasers franchise. I saw that. I put that note down as well. Do you think <laughs> someone is just like updating this every once in a while? Just like, <laughs> I don't know, some user called, I don't know, the Zaggy Dog or something. Zaggy. <laughs> As of June 2020, still no more Shadow Chaser yeah. movies. Or maybe just like Frank Zaggy, you know, trying to get a reboot happening or something. Like, <laughs> guys... So, yeah. Someone up, upload my trivia. This is where the series totally goes. It's it's like it goes off a cliff. It's like this is so, and and maybe to some degree to its benefit, it's so off. You know the cliff. It's like now Zagarino is an a race of aliens or something, 
and they like land and they give the people on earth that are it's like way back it's like 3000 years ago flashback at the beginning of the movie and they give the people that are on earth like a key and then they like fly away but then their thing blows up and everybody dies and then we cut to current day and they're trying to figure out what happened here the archaeologists are like let's discover what's going on with this place where everybody died and and they find the key and then awaken zags who was on uh, whose corpse i guess alien corpse was underground and then was it even a corpse i don't know what it was it, it was it was just him like he was just taking a nap underground yeah. and then someone sends an email and he wakes up yeah <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? Like that stuff, I'm kind of like, okay, this is so fucking dumb. I'm on board where they're exactly. like sending an email and then all yeah. of a sudden that awakens him. I'm like, what? Yeah. I don't understand. And, and and then like he wakes up and this happens a couple of times in the movie, but he pops out of the ground like a mole, like his head just comes out of the ground. Like, I don't know, it looked really goofy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a trademark move uh, that he repeats a couple of times in this movie. The, the thing with this one is it starts off with shots of the spaceship of the third movie mm -hmm. so there's continuity even Maybe. though these unless they were just cheap and they couldn't get another spaceship oh yeah, yeah i guess so yeah yeah they don't really show you events of the third movie it's just like exteriors of the spaceship so i guess yeah they just recycled that footage and gave it another spin maybe um, yeah who maybe, knows yeah i mean who one knows yeah uh, no one knows. yeah and it so he's in terminator mode now he's got a robot voice and he's basically chasing them unstoppable yes yeah, some sort of non giving up zagarino <laughs> guy yeah <laughs> And yeah, it starts really ridiculous and kind of entertaining. But the, for me, the problem with this movie is it's just it 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 has so much downtime. It's just like all of the archaeo archaeologists talking. I mean, I definitely fell asleep a couple of times during this one, <laughs> but still, I thought it was fine. I don't know, like I didn't hate it. Um, I don't know, yeah, just like. It, it, it started pretty good. Like, the, you've got uh, Zagarino leading these, like, shitty, almost like South Park aliens yeah. into somewhere in Africa. I mean, this was shot in South Africa, so I'm assuming, like, everyone, everything is taking place in South Africa or whatever for reasons. I don't know. And I thought it just picked up after the third one. I'm like, man, I do not understand the lore of this franchise at all. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, it's just like recycled footage. And and yeah, I don't know, like a couple of times with Zagarino going all Terminator. And, and I know even even reminded me of like Sideshow Bob and Cape Fear episode. Uh, like he's uh, the camera v reveals him hanging off the back of a truck and, and, and that kind of stupid stuff was good. There's a scene where he like latches onto the back of a car too that reminded me of uh homer with the geo yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's kind of funny that the first thing you think about is the like simpsons. The, yeah the simpsons not the terminator not, not just terminator <laughs> not just yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, that's, uh, yeah i wrote down that this has a really ridiculous final shot but now i don't even remember what it is isn't is it like he the zags is still alive or something or there's a kid that turns into like a, the zags or something yeah, yeah that's know. it that's it the kid is supposedly become the next Shadow Frank Chaser. Zagarino slash alien slash android mm -hmm. who knows I mean especially in this one they're really not consistent you know like with the head turning turning and the Robocop e sound but he's supposed to be an alien so yeah I don't know I don't know like just makes you think like was there a master plan to explain this franchise at one point but there definitely wasn't the just i kind of want her to be but there isn't like who knows maybe if they made like 10 of these there'd be like you know like with the legend of zelda series you've got this like timeline i want like a project shadow chaser like i don't know just pick pick it back up make like 10 more movies and then make a timeline and a guidebook and <laughs> you know commit to all this shit <laughs> Um, but yeah, like a Sagarino, an alien this time with the neck robot sounds. Yeah. He, he's also going on about like wanting to find his people. That's that's like the main mission. He wants 
this key that was buried there to find his people again. His alien friends. <laughs> yeah, his alien friends, because then I'm definitely assuming he's not a robot. Like, do robots have people? Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. know. Is, is saying that a robot hate crime? Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I will <laughs> it's say. Confusing shit. One thing I thank this movie for is um, it led me to realize that Mark Roper, the director of this movie, directed a sequel to the movie Livewire. Oh yeah, that's true with, with Brian Janisi. Yeah, Livewire, Human Time Bomb. I was like, I gotta watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you didn't like this project, Even though I didn't like this, one. but I love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wire so yeah i know you like that one yeah i wonder if they're even related <laughs> i don't think so it might be similar to these yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean as long as it's about time bombs yeah which like even the movie time bomb isn't really about time bombs have you seen that one the, um, michael bean it's avi nasher avi nasher movie have you not seen that oh i have i've i watched half of that and i fell asleep yeah i yeah, haven't uh, watched the rest of it that checks out. <laughs> it's not the best uh, Alvin Asher movie, but I mean, that movie's called Time Bomb, but it's not about time bombs, really. Like, I don't know. That movie was a little underwhelming. And For me, Orion's Key, a.k.a. Project Shadow Chaser 4, gets the two piss eyes down. I think this movie sucks. Uh, okay. Uh, this one gets, for me, the Casey Green doc saying this is fine <laughs> and yeah. while he's surrounded by fire. Fire. Because that was you in the whole series. Yeah, aside from the first one. The first one, I can... Yeah, that was a <laughs> thumbs up for me, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, it should also be mentioned, I forgot to say, uh, Boaz Davidson worked on the fourth movie, who you would uh, remember from a number of movies. Did he produce it? or No, he was he... A, one of the writers. He wrote the story. He was, like, story credited. Oh, okay. Yeah, who you'll remember as the Israeli film director of the Lemon Popsicle series and more. All right, well, that's all of the Shadow Chaser films. Uh, are you happy that I made you do this? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not sad, but <laughs> there were definitely moments where I was, was uh, you know, like when I finished them all, where I was like, these are six hours I'm not getting back. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm looking forward to doing the podcast. So I'd, I'd like to talk about it. That was my sentiment after I'd finished them. So, you know, it, it's not a total loss. And so, well, I mean, that's, that's me seeing <laughs> it's kind of an underhanded thing to say. Maybe. <laughs> but well, no, it makes no, it so I, that it was not it, it wasn't all for naught. No, no, exactly. And there were definitely good moments. Yeah. Uh, in, in these, I just wish there were a bit more great moments, like memorable moments. But yeah, at least now Frank Zagarino was in my life. And totally. I'll, I'll never be able to forget him. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like when I watched every Relentless movie and I didn't even do a podcast about it. <laughs> I mean, we can. You still can if you want. But No. Well, I think whatever we do for if we ever if we do another franchise frenzy soon, I think it, it's your turn to pick a franchise. Oh, OK. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And you know, don't I've pick the witch. What's that? The witchcraft. Witchcraft movies where there's like 18 of them. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking as well. Like, if we do longer franchises, we're going to have to split them up because yeah. we can't do like, for example, even if you know, I don't see us doing like Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the Thirteenth anytime soon. I'm not ruling it out, but it's just like so overexposed that. Well, I think in that in that case, we could maybe do one episode on a whole series because like we don't have to talk too much about all the details. That's you know? true. That's true. Yeah, that's we true. could just be like, yeah, number two. Yeah, I. Yeah. If, if we ever do witchcraft, we'll split them up and we'll do like five episodes on witchcraft. Yeah, we could also do like uh, sh like special episodes of Franchise Frenzy where we say like, what's our most underrated of a franchise, you know, or whatever. We could talk about like, you know, I'll I'll tell you why I love uh, New Blood from Friday the Thirteenth. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> you know, sure. uh, or why you know Freddy Two is one of my favorites now <laughs> because it's great. Yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> yeah, we could do little special features. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about it and see what's good to cover. Like, ideally not something very long. I'll see. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Sweet. Well, as always, you can find us at back rowcom and on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at back row Cineblog. I am on Letterboxd as YCKMD underscore, and Carlo is on Letterboxd as Carlo Goes Boom.
Boom, boom. And we will see you next time in the video aisle on Franchise Frenzy. Bye. Bye. <laughs>